Welcome back to Automation of the Week. My name is Brian Hayes, and on Tuesdays, we like to walk through a build of an automation that will hopefully create some value for you within your business. Today, we actually have a request from one of our members. She's got a specific problem, and we come up with a solution as a potential option to solve that problem, and figured it would probably be useful for everybody else here on YouTube. If you like this channel, consider becoming a member. Not only does it support us, it also gives you priority when it comes to video ideas. If you have a specific problem and you're trying to think of an automation or some way to solve that problem, that's a perfect topic for us to take a look at and make a video on, like the one today. Here's the situation. We've got a company that has a lot of opportunities that are open and they might not even quote that opportunity for many, many months. In between them creating that opportunity and eventually quoting it, prices are changing. So within Salesforce, they're changing price book entries to reflect that new updated pricing. But what this causes is new pricing is not gonna be reflected in those existing opportunities. Just because the list price has changed does not mean the sales price on the opportunity product within that deal is gonna change. And this could potentially lead to salespeople overcharging their prospects, which is what we want to avoid. Let me show you an example, and then we'll talk about the possible solutions that we could build to solve this problem. So here we are within an opportunity in Salesforce. We've got this line item here, this opportunity product record for a diesel generator. And you can see that the list price is $100,000 and the sales price by default is gonna equal that list price unless the salesperson chooses to change it. But what's happening is the company is changing the list price in between that opportunity being created and when that quote is eventually generated. So if we do that, if we come over here to our product record and we change the price, Let's say it went from $100,000 to $50,000. And then we can click back to that opportunity. You can see here that list price has been updated, but the sales price is what it was before. It was $100,000. Now this is normal behavior. And this typically makes sense. If you communicate a price to a customer, you don't want an update to the product records or the price book entry records to change that price within your opportunity. That could get very confusing and you could have a really upset customer. But in this case, what happens if that price is, is going down? We at least want to notify the salesperson that there's been a change in the list price for one of the products included on their opportunity to give the salesperson the option to change that price as they see fit. One option is to just update the sales price for the salesperson. But I don't think that's a great idea because it's possible that they had communicated with their prospect via email or over the phone in some sort of informal way before they generated a quote. And we certainly don't want to pull the rug out from underneath them uh, without notifying them that the price is going to change. So another solution is that we come up with a way to notify the salesperson when they're looking at this opportunity that pricing has changed. So whenever they come back around to eventually generate that quote, they can then learn and see that pricing has changed and they can make the decision whether or not they want to update it on their opportunity. So here's what we can do. We can create a screen flow and put it on the opportunity record. We could put it somewhere here. We can have the screen flow only show up if an opportunity product sales price and list price do not match. We can even be more specific. Maybe we're not concerned with discounts. Maybe we only want this to show up if the list price and the sales price don't match because the sales price is more than the list price. If that's what we're worried about, on the opportunity record here, we could have a screen flow show up that only shows up if the list price and sales price don't match. And then in that screen flow, we could list out the products where this is the case, where that price may have changed since the salesperson last looked at it. That would then give the salesperson the ability to review those opportunity products right in our flow and we can even go a step further and give them the option to select and update the opportunity products if they want those prices to be updated to reflect the current list pricing. This is ultimately gonna do two things for us. It's going to notify the salesperson, hey, a price has changed here, you might wanna take a look at it, and it's gonna save them time. So if they do wanna update their opportunity products to reflect current pricing, just a couple clicks and we're good to go. Okay, so before we even build that flow, we're gonna need some way to control when that flow gets displayed on our opportunity record. Now, I think we can do this by creating a formula field on the opportunity product that compares list price to sales price. And we'll say, if list price and sales price do not match, then you know check a box. 
And then what we can do is create a rollup summary field on the opportunity record to see if there's any products that have that box checked. And that in turn will check a box on the opportunity record, thereby allowing us to look at that field to display or hide our screen flow if there's a line item on the deal where the list price and the sales price don't match. So let's go ahead and build that out and then we'll create the flow. So first thing here, let's go to the opportunity product and then click on edit object in the upper right hand corner. Click on fields and relationships and create a new field. This is gonna be a formula field and we'll make this a checkbox and we'll say list and sales price do not match. Click next. Go ahead and click on advanced formula builder here then click insert field. So from here, we could insert the sales price and then we can come back and hit insert again to add our list price. In between these two merge fields here, insert an operator for does not equal. Okay, so now if those two prices don't equal, it's going to return the value of true, which means it's gonna check our box. Click ch check syntax. That looks pretty good. Treat blank fields as blank, then click next. Next again and save. You don't have to have this on the layout. I'm gonna include it on the layout for now just so we can troubleshoot it and make sure it's working properly. But typically I think I would hide it. So right here, you can see that list and sales price do not match for our generator item. If we go back to our opportunity and look at our service level agreement where the list and the sales price do match, we can see that that box is not checked. So that works. Let's go back up to our opportunity click the gear in the upper right again, click edit object again, and now we're gonna add a new field at the opportunity level. Click fields and relationships, click new, and this time choose roll up summary. For this field, I'm gonna call it line items price mismatch. We don't have too many characters, so we don't want it to be too long. Then click next, and our summarized object is gonna be an opportunity product, and then we're just gonna count. We're gonna count how many line items have that checkbox. So for filter criteria, choose only records meeting certain conditions. And then here we can find our formula field, list and sales price do not match. So if that equals true, then we want it to be included in our rollup summary. It's gonna count how many line items we have where that sales and that list price don't match. Go ahead and click next. Now for this example, I'm just saying if they're not equal, we want that box to be checked. You might want this to only check the box if the sales price is higher than the list price, because maybe your salespeople regularly add discounts, so you expect list price and sales price are gonna be different most of the time. If that's the case, then create a more strict formula on the opportunity product level, so you're only showing this flow when you really want to. I'm again gonna add this field to our layout, but this is one of those things that you might want to um, might want to hide because it's not that valuable. We're just going to use it to show our flow. Okay, now let's create the flow. Come back to home, bring up flows here, create a new flow, and this is going to be a screen flow. Click create. First thing we want to do is on the left hand side, create a new resource that's a variable called record ID with a lowercase r and a capital I, and then choose text and make sure that this is available for input we're gonna pass the opportunities ID into this variable. The next thing we're gonna do is get all of the line items that meet our criteria. So let's call this get line items with pricing mismatch. For our object here, go ahead and search for opportunity products. That's the API name for line items. And we want all opportunity products whose opportunity ID is equal to our record ID. So these are line items that are related to the opportunity that we happen to be on when this flow runs. We'll add another condition here, and we're gonna look at that list and sales price do not match formula, and we'll say that is equal to true. So we're only bringing back the line items where there's a mismatch, we don't need all of them. And we wanna get all of the records, and we'll just store all of the fields for now. Click save. Now let's add a screen component. We'll call this line items for the name of our screen, and let's add a data table. We'll call this one line items table. Not too creative, but that works just fine. And now for our source, for our data, choose the opportunity product get that we just created the step before. We can then configure rows. 
we want row selection mode to be enabled and we want them to be able to select multiple rows in case they want to update multiple line items. Minimum selection can be one. I don't think we need a maximum selection. And now for columns, let's add what fields show up in our table. One thing we're definitely going to want is the name of that opportunity product. Go ahead and add that one. Let's add another column. This would be our list price. We definitely want to see that. And then go ahead and add our sales price. This way they can see what that list price is and compare it to the sales price really easily. I think that's all we need at this point. The next thing to do is select the footer here and go to configure footer and we can change the label for that next button. So I want it to be really clear what's going to happen if they click the next button. What's going to happen is if they click next, it's going to update the line items that they selected and set the sales price to the current list price. So let's write that here. It says update sales price to current list price. You can see that there. I'm also going to hide the previous button. I'm going to hide the pause button. We don't need to pause this flow. Don't want to give them that ability. So there's just one button here when this pops up to update the sales price to current list price. Then click done. To make that happen, we're going to need to loop through the opportunity products that they selected and then actually with an assignment step, set that sales price to whatever the current list price is. And then we're going to need to update the records and, and update them in the database. So let's add a loop here. For the collection variable on the right hand side, you can see screen components for line items table shows up. So we can select that and it will let us loop through the selected rows. I'm just going to call this loop through selected line items. First item to last is just fine. And now let's add an assignment step here. We can call this update sales price. And then for our variable, we have another new variable that's been created for us. It's the current item from the loop. And you can see right underneath that language, it says opportunity line item. So it's telling us what the object is. And it's telling us that this is the current item that's that we're looping through. So for uh, however many line items they chose, it's going to go through this process for each one, which is nice for us because we don't have to worry about them just selecting one or two doesn't really matter. We're just going to loop as many times as is necessary. Select sales price here, which is also called unit price. And then we're going to set this to the current item from loops list price. The next thing we need to do is add this line item variable to a collection. That way we're saving the change because this current item variable changes every time it goes through the loop. So we would lose our work if we weren't essentially making a copy of it putting it to the side so that we can later update all of these records in the database at the same time. So let's create a new variable here. It's going to be called the line items, or actually let's call it the updated line items. Data type will be a record. Make sure you check the box to allow for multiple values and then select opportunity product or opportunity line item. Click done. And instead of equals, we want to add. And for the value, we just want the current item from the loop. So here we're changing that sales price of the item that's in the loop. And then immediately after that, we are adding that uh, updated record to a collection, which is essentially copying it into a separate holding place. And that's going to repeat for as many line items as we have. Then finally, outside of the loop, when we've gone through all those line items, now we want to update the database. Click update records here. Let's call this update line items. And we can choose from our different record collections here. The updated line items is an option. And so though whatever records we've got in that group, that's all going to be updated at the same time. Go ahead and click save. I'm going to call this opportunity dash update line item sales price and hit save. Go ahead and activate this and let's see how it does on our test opportunity. So if we come back to our opportunity record here, we can add our flow by clicking edit page under the gear in the upper right hand corner selecting flow from the left hand side and let's add it at the top here so it's going to be really hard to miss make sure where you have the record id available on the right hand side make sure you check that box so you're passing the record id into the variable if you do not see this option for record id it means you didn't mark that variable we created as available for input you have to check that box in the flow in order for it to show up here go ahead and click save we'll come back if this is all working fine and update our visibility settings so that the flow only displays when we want it to. I just hit save because this lightning record page has never been saved before. It asked me to activate it. Okay, so right out of the box, this is working pretty well. 
we can see that our flow has loaded. We can see that we've got our product here. Our list price is 50,000. Our sales price is 100,000. Uh, there's a pretty big mismatch there. So let's select that one line item we've got and click update sales price to current list price. It went through the flow. The flow then restarted and it has brought back zero line items for us. If we look here on the lower right-hand side, you can see that our list, our sales price has updated. It now matches our list price. So let's try this again. I'll just throw in some different prices for this one. Let's change our SLA as well, just so we can show that it's working uh, for not just one item, but for multiple items and hit save there. Now, if I click refresh, our flow shows up. Let's select both items this time and click update sales price to current list price. There we go. Went through just fine again. Now let's add some visibility here. Click the gear in the upper right-hand corner, click edit page, select the flow component in the middle of our screen. And on the right-hand side where it says set component visibility, let's add a filter. We only want this flow to display and run when there is a price mismatch. If there's no price mismatch, we do not need to see this flow. So I'm gonna pull up that field, line items price mismatch. And if this value is greater than zero, then we want it to display. Because remember, that's a number field. So it's gonna count how many line items we've got. If there's even just one that has a mismatched price, I want this flow to display. So if it's greater than zero, it should show up. Perfect, it's hidden. It's hidden because we don't have any mismatches with our current products. But let's change that. Let's update this again to a different price. And you know what? Let's add some more products too. We'll add some more generators here. I'm changing the prices on these ones too. So now when we come back to the screen, if we hit refresh, all right, we've got three different line items here that have a price discrepancy. Our SLA gold is fine. That one doesn't show up. And let's say we only want to update two of these. We'll take these two generators. The first one we'll just leave as is with the wrong price and click update. That updated our products in the lower right-hand corner and it left the one we did not select alone, which is exactly what we wanted. That should take care of it. Now there is some more refinement you could do. We could add some additional visibility uh, features here. Perhaps if there's a price mismatch or if we're in the proposal price quote stage, we hide the flow. You know, that way there's a process for the salesperson to essentially ignore our warning here. And when they move through the process, this price warning goes away. They've already settled on a price. We're past that negotiation stage. This solution covers a lot of ground. We looked at a formula field and an opportunity product. We use that to roll up with a roll up summary field on the opportunity, which we then use to control the visibility of a screen flow, which gets any opportunity products that have different sales and list prices. And then we created a loop within that flow to make it really easy for the salesperson to update multiple line items to the current list price if they choose. Please leave your questions in the comments below and take a look at some of our other videos because we've gone through these different concepts in a little bit more detail in some of our earlier videos. Hope you found it helpful. Uh, let me know what other sorts of videos you'd like to see us make. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.